In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to induce a specific mutation in a gene which alters a gene product to a desired outcome. In this example, we were working with an expression vector or a plasmid, which is a small circular double-stranded DNA molecule separated from the chromosomal DNA, most commonly found in bacteria. We use these plasmids for gene expression in cells. Prior to the mutation step, we had already made this plasmid expression vector with a GFP gene from the jellyfish Aquora Victoria built into it. The gene product from this GFP gene is a relatively small protein that can spontaneously emit green light when excited by blue light in the presence of oxygen. Therefore, the name green fluorescent protein. After a few weeks, we managed to isolate our plasmid vectors with the gene. How we manage to incorporate the gene into the vector is a subject for another video. This vector is later transformed into a special E. coli host that is easy to transform and can express the inserted gene. The goal of this video is to show how we can change the plasmid already containing the GFP gene to for example a plasmid containing the yellow fluorescent protein gene. By setting up a specific polymerase chain reaction we were able to do this. Here we are making the master mix, which is a solution containing all the ingredients necessary for the reaction. The master mix contains the isolated GFP plasmids. On this specifically designed primers will bind, which will cause the change from GFP to YFP. A polymerase, which will bind to the primers and start replicating the plasmids. DNTPs, which a polymerase uses to build the new strands of DNA. A buffer and water. In this reaction the plasmids will be replicated resulting in plasmids with one old strand and one new strand. The new strand contains a mutation which will lead to YFP so we have to make sure that two new strands will connect together. We do this by adding a nuclease after the PCR reaction. This enzyme will recognize and cut all methylated DNA in the solution including the old strands. The newly formed DNA strands, which haven't been methylated, will remain and bond spontaneously with each other because of the complementarity between the strands, forming our mutated plasmids containing the yellow fluorescent protein gene. To test if everything was successful, we next transform the plasmids to the E. coli cells to see if any yellow fluorescent protein would be produced by the bacteria. We used a heat shock transformation. In this procedure, add 4 microliters of the plasmids to the bacterial culture and mix gently. Incubate on ice for 30 minutes. Perform a heat shock by quickly transferring the competent cells to a 42 degrees water bed and holding there for 45 seconds. Quickly return the cells to ice and incubate for 2 minutes. Add 950 microliters of SOC medium and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 1 hour. Here I'm modifying a Pasteur pipette to plate the solution. Plate 100 microliters out on LB plates with selection markers so only these colonies will grow on the plates. Thank you. 
Finally, incubate overnight at 37 degrees and normally colonies that can express the yellow fluorescent protein will now grow. Thanks for watching and see you next time.